I greet you all in the mighty Jesus' name. We thank God the Father again this morning who has given us grace to meet each other, for sharing this great message. Brethren, it's by grace of God we are all well. It's by grace of God we are healed. For we have got all we need in Christ Jesus. The Bible in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, makes us to know that the God shall provide every need of yours according to its riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So there is no need, no want, whatsoever you desire in your heart that God can to provide, provided you present to Him and provided you wait and provided you tell Him as a Father. The Bible in the book of Matthew 7, chapter 7, makes us to understand that whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever you need, it can be done unto you if you pray about it. Ask and it shall be given to you. And there is no limitation. Heaven is bigger than what you can imagine. It's a reason Apostle Paul, when he was just approaching the good temple, the temple of goodness, he met a leper who was crippled from his mother's uh, birth. And that uh, person had thought that the apostles would give him some money, would give him some needs. But uh, we remember the servant of God, Paul, just looked on his eyes and Peter and said, Silver and God, have I none. But in the mighty Jesus' name, stand up and walk. So the provision that we have in God is unlimited. No money, no dollar, no whatever source of earning, no whatever source of talents that is able to purchase the greatness and mightiness of our God. You need to know that whatever situation you are going through, just get time to pray and tell your God of what you really want. And I can assure you, for sure, he will make it to pass in Jesus' mighty name. So don't be worried what by pressures of this life. Get time to pray. Get time to pray. Get time to pray. Some of you might be going through some difficulty in your families. Uh, maybe marriage. Uh, maybe your children. But I will say to you that don't be worried by anything. Kneel down and call upon the Lord. Father, in the mighty Jesus' name, in this situation, I request for intervention. I request for grace in Jesus' mighty name. Now, this morning, I just want to share with you a bit on the Word of God. It's a lesson that's important for us to make as just late in the morning. Number one, you need to realize that before you do anything in this life, you must be able to raise on your feet and lift up your hands and praise God Almighty, giving thanks to Him for all He has done to your life, for whatsoever He has provided to you, the Bible in the book of Zam, chapter 100, verses 4, make us to understand that for sure the Lord needs us to enter into his presence with thanksgiving, to enter into his courts with praise. So this morning, as you wake up, before you do anything, just praise God. No matter what the situation you're going through, make your mind to be protected. The Bible makes us to understand that guard your heart with all your abilities. Because in your heart, that's where there is the springs of life. So in order to acquire the springs of life, you need to protect it by all your power, by all your might. In that regard, you need to just go before the Lord. Don't put up every problem and pressure of no. Be relaxed and say, Father, I give you glory. Father, I thank you for each and every happening to my life. I bless you and I see you happening, making things happen to my life. And through the praising, yeah. and then you go to worship God. Because you make your mind to be protected. The Bible makes us to understand that. Guard your heart with all your abilities. Because in your heart, that's where there is the springs of life. So in order to acquire the springs of life, you need to protect it by all your power, by all your might. In that regard, you need to just go before the Lord. Don't Put up every problem and pressure of no. Be relaxed and say, Father, I give you glory. Father, I thank you for each and every happening to my life. I bless you and I see you up and make things happen to my life. And through the praising, and then you go to worship God. 
Because when you start by praising God, you come to the second point of thanking God. Thank God whatever situation you're going whether good, whether it's bad, just say, Father, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And then from there, you need now to go before the Lord and say, Father, I commit this day in your hands. You commit your day in full perspective. In your spiritual life, saying, Father, I dedicate my life that you called me unto. May that mission and plan you have for my life come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Second, you pray to God for your daily provision, that is your physical. That Lord, give me favor in whatever I touch. In whatever I do, let me be favored in the mighty Jesus' name. Whatsoever problem you have, just mention it before the Lord. Just mention it before the Lord. Don't mama. Don't complain. Put it as a mission and ask God for intervention. And before you know it, God has done it in Jesus' mighty name. Another thing you're supposed to pray for is body. That pray for the church. Father, I commit the church of Christ in the, in the, in the mighty name. I pray for my pastor. I pray for the servant of God in the church of God, in the house of God, in the place I worship. I request for spirit of grace to be upon them that they fulfill their calling in Jesus' mighty name. And lastly, commit the leadership and rulership wherever you are in the precious name of Jesus. So Father, I commit my country in your hands. I pray for the leaders. I pray for the president. I pray for the kings. I pray for the queen. That Lord, you bless and have mercy on them. Let them lead them in lead us in peace. Let them guide us the way which you intended. Let them fulfill the calling and mission you have for this country. In Jesus' mighty name. I see you expanding. I see you growing. I see you raising this day. I decree this day is blessed for you in the mighty Jesus' name. Whatsoever you shall touch, it shall prosper. Whatsoever you go, you shall lace. If you are going for any meeting, any person for you are, who is deciding on your destiny, I see God opening doors that you never see again. So I release you by the anointing of God in the mighty Jesus' name. I see you coming back giving thanks to God in the mighty Jesus' name. I love you. I'm Pastor Sako Merrick. We meet together again tomorrow for another session of prayer and worship before God. I love you and may God bless you in Jesus' name. But before we cross, I would like us to continue reading the Bible. Today, we are in the book of Genesis, chapter 29, and I would like us to read together that book so that it can come to your mind and it will be roaring in your head every time. I remember one time God told me, Sako, you're supposed to read my word. Sako, you're supposed to read my word. Now I command you, every day ensure that you read at least two or three scriptures, the chapters in the scripture, and understand them very well. And through that obedience, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Now, I read the book of Genesis chapter 29 for purpose of us to recite and to see what God did to the servant of God during those days. Genesis chapter 29. Then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern peoples. Then I saw a well in the field with three flocks of sheep laying near it because the flocks were watered from that well. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would lower the stone away from the well mouth and water the, sh and water the sheep. Then they would return the stone to its place over the mouth of the well. Jacob asked the shepherds, My brothers, where are you from? Where are you? We are from Haran, they replied. He said to them, Do you know Raban, Nahor's grandson? They said, Yes, we know him. They answered. Then Jacob asked, Is he well? They said, yes, he is, they, they said. And here comes his daughter, Rachel, with the sheep. Look, he said, the sun is still high. It is not time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to the pasture. We can't, they replied, until all flocks are gathered and the stone, the stone has been lowered away from the mouth of the earth. Then we will water the sheep. While he was there still talking with them, Rachel came with his father's sheep, for she was shepherdess. When Jacob saw Lecho's daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Then Jacob kissed Lecho and began to weep aloud. He had told Lecho that he was the relative of her father and son of Rebekah. So she ran and told her father. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he hurried to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home. And there Jacob told him all these things. Then Laban said to him, 
You are my own flesh and blood. After Jacob had stayed with him for one month, Laban said to him, Just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what is your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Lecho. Lecho had weak eyes, but, Le but Lecho was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Lecho and said, I'll work for you seven years in return of your daughter, Lecho. Laban said, it is better that I give you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Lecho, but they seemed like only a few days for him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed and I would want to lie with her. So Laban brought together all people of the press and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took daughter Leah and gave her to Jacob, and Jacob lay with her. And Laban gave his servant girl Zilpah to his daughter as a maid servant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is it that you have done to me? I saved for Lecho, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week. Then we'll give you the younger one also, in return of another seven years of work. Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah, and then Laban gave him his daughter, Lecho, to be his wife. Laban gave his servant girl, Bira, to, to his daughter, Rachel, as a maid servant. Jacob lay his lot in Lecho also, and he, he loved Lecho more than Leah, and he worked for the Laban for another seven years. When the Lord saw that, that, that Leah was not loved, he opened a womb. But Lecho was barren. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to the son. She named him Luben. And she said, It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Sure, my husband will love me now. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to the son, she said, Because the Lord has held that I was not loved, he gave me this one too. So his name, he named him Simeon. Again she conceived. And when she gave birth to the son, she said, now at last my husband will come attached to me because I bore him three sons. So he was named Levi. She conceived again and when she gave birth to the son, she said, this time I also praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped giving, having children. So we give glory to God. That's the end of the verse of today. The day is the 29 and our verse was from Genesis 29. We see the power of passions. We shall talk that when we meet next time. May God bless you. I love you. Pastor Sako, I'll speak again next time. And may God make you have a good and wonderful day. As Jacob experienced the favor of God in that world, so I see you experiencing favor of God in your work. I see you experiencing favor of God in your business. In whatsoever you do, God shall make you raise. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree this day is blessed for you. In Jesus' name, I love you. See you next time. In Jesus' name, amen.